I've never really been, even though I've had everything, I've never really been happy. I have the pleasure of welcoming Daniel Johnson. Mate, can't wait to get into this one. It's going to be a good one. randomly just said, is, is this shop available? And she goes, yeah, actually. And she goes, who's it for? I said, for me. She goes, yeah, you're about 15, 16. I said, yeah, I know. Let's move the age out a bit and let's just talk some business. I'm employing guys at like 35. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, who's the boss of me? If you're on a job, let me know. If not, I'll keep it moving sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Then I started traveling around the world, um, regular, involved in all the major tournaments, World Cup, Russia, Euros. A lot of people say to me, oh, Dan, you changed. Dan, like, why are you never here? Oh, you think you're too good now. It's not about being too good. It's, it's, it's about working smarter. I'm not going to sit in one space every day for five years. I've used my whole network. Everything, every person that's ever sat in my chair, every businessman, I've always took their emails, their phone numbers, always carry myself well, and I'm tuned in. Reason being, I've always had a bigger picture. One day, I was at the wrong place, wrong time. Um, lost it all. Built an absolute fucking empire worth millions. Gone. And I went down there. I went to do uh, one part and I ended up playing a massive role in it. And they loved it to bits. This is absolutely fucking major. This is probably one of the biggest things I'm part of that I've ever... I don't blow smoke about anything, but this is something that... It, it is life-changing. It's the first ever film to be produced through cryptocurrency. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So before we begin today's podcast, I'd like to say a big thank you to Casita Properties, who are the UK's leading property company when it comes to off-market discrete buy-to-let sales. All their links will be in the description below. I have the pleasure of welcoming mm -hmm. Daniel Johnson. Mate, can't wait to get into this one. It's going to be a good one. How are you, mate? You all right, yeah? Mate, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah. Actor, entrepreneur, loads of other things. We're going to get into it. No. Mate, to kick this off, let's let the audience know little bit about your background, yeah. how you got to where you are, what you're doing now. Okay, so I'm um, I'm a British actor, the entrepreneur and a visionary. Um, I started out in business very young. So I'm a mixed race. Uh, my mum's, um, she's, she's fully Italian and my dad's from the Caribbean. Um, I grew up in a very affluent area, but unfortunately we didn't have the uh, funds to match the status. So, um, Bit of a sticky one, really, because obviously there's two sides to the coin there. I'm living in the area where there's, you know, a million pound hours is one side, and then the other side we've got the council's flats and stuff like that. So obviously I was in the in the council flat with my mum. Um, there's me and my brother. Uh, she had two free cleaning jobs, um, trying to pay the bills and whatnot. Um, I was the eldest, but I was quite forward for my age. So from about nine, I was I started to. I started getting an itch for, I need to start making some money to help my family progress and elevate in life and try and get my mum to not work so hard, even though she's a workaholic, um, which isn't a problem. Um, I like people that have got the work there anyway, and that's probably where I've learned uh, most of mine. So I started out getting a paper round from about 10, 11. Um, and then I started school. School didn't go down too well with me. I got expelled from several schools. Ended up in a classroom, about five of us, with about four teachers, all trying to, all trying to calm us down, to have a conversation about life, and um, I went off the rails quite a lot. Had an absent father. Um, I'm not really one to have the violins out about, you know, no dad and any role models, because I'm a strong believer in in yourself. Sometimes when you're in a dark place, there's no one that can pull you out of that, apart from you. You got to believe in you, and it's only you at the end of the day when it's all said and done it's the action you take to get yourself out of a situation to step forward um and be a man of a house of such a young age is a big thing for me um school was a thing where <clears throat> i spoke to teachers not rudely but when i'm going to school and i'm feeling you know i'm 11 but my mindset's now 21 you know i've got things going on at home which schools don't really allow you to speak about. So I had quite a very bold character. I, I knew who I was from young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very strong-minded. And that comes from the Italian gene. We're very passionate about what we do and what we say and how we move. And um, I was very curious. I said, I said, how long have you, how long have you had um, 
this teaching job? You know, just a quick question. And you hear things like 20 years, 30 years, and you're thinking, wow, mm. you've been in this school 30 years. I'm 11, I'm, I'm trying to get out quickly. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know how you're lasting this long. Yeah. And um, it it always stuck with me that if, so, if, if you're stuck in one place for so long, how are you, how are you moving forward? Yeah. I know you're teaching and you know, it's a great thing for you, but when it's all said and done, you know, part of being an entrepreneur and, and, and entrepreneurship is freedom. You, is to be able to move when you want to move, mm -hmm. wake up when you want to wake up. Not necessarily told what to do, but learn from those around you. There's a difference with if I'm told what to do to advice. But in school, they're very more, I'm trying to tell you, I'm not trying to help you. So I, I started to see from, from a young age that there wasn't no help really for me to <clears throat> evolve as a, as a young man with loads of problems in the background. Which, which wasn't really shared back then. It's not like now you've got social media, everyone's got a problem. They're ranting and raving on Snapchat and this and that, the whole world knows in literally five seconds. Back then it's just you and yeah. your problem. So <clears throat> I got expelled from loads of schools, that, um, I had no schools. From about 14, I was out of school. So then it, it, it just dawned on me, okay, I've got no school, I've got no education, it's just me. My mum's working, cleaning jobs, you know, and my dad's not about, my brother's going to school, the bills are still coming in. Um, and then, you know, I was uh, <laughs> I was quite busy back then. Young, handsome guy, bit reckless at the time as well. Bit off the rails. Had a phone call one day saying, "Yeah, you're gonna be a dad." And I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "That's crazy." Um, one of the things that I did miss out on in school was I was very good at um, football and basketball, and I got to an elite level. And it, and it says to me that they wanted to sign me. But this is when I got expelled from the schools. Mm. So then I've been told I'm having a kid. Then my mates, some of my mates are going off to, you know, England camps and basketball camps. And my key thing then, even then the guy said, look, I know you're misbehaving at school, yeah, but please come to training. And then I was, you know, I was in between two minds. What am I doing? Am I going to roll the dice and, st and try and play football for years and years and years and not be paid? Or, you know, I was, you know, We've all got a past and I was, I was quite young. I was getting myself in trouble quite a lot, but that's all I knew back then. So obviously, you know, 14, being told you're having a kid's not, mm, it's not easy. Yeah. So it's, I've gone from a nine year old guy to 14 and, and then bang, having a kid. I've had no school. I'm in trouble with the law all the time. You know, it's, it's going off. And I just said, look, I can't play football. I need to buy Pampers. It's not a joke. Like who's gonna, who, who, who's gonna, I couldn't even get to training because there's no one there to say, I'm going to send you a coach, Dan. I'm going to send you a car, Dan. There's none of that. Mm -hmm. So straight away, I knew I was on my own. So it goes back to when I was nine and I was doing a paper round. So I wasn't even allowed to do the paper round, but because they saw us, I was switched on. I was nine, but I was a bit older. I had small rounds and I said, nah, I need more money. And then I got a bigger round, a bigger round, a bigger round. And um, it's funny because it's actually on, on, on one of the paper rounds, there was a really nice gaff and I, I kept looking at his house and I was thinking, how am I living in some box room, you know, in a flat? And at the time, uh, my mum was trying her best to provide, which I'm I'm extremely grateful for. Yeah. But back then I still had ambitions. I wanted more and I wanted to make sure that my family could be in it in a better position. And then my brother can go to school and have, have, have proper shoes because I remember I had plimp soles. I had to cut out the night ticket and sell the tape it on and be the laughing stock at school. But it kind of stopped because I wasn't that guy to kind of, I'll have a joke with you, but just know when it's, you know, it's enough. Yeah. And then um, it just went on from that really. And then, and then obviously I had my little boy and then I just turned up at my mum's one day, I didn't even tell her. I just knocked on the door, I said, you right, mum? I said, I've got a little boy. Do you know what I mean? Wow. And, and, and she's like, right, sit down. There was no sort of what's happened or what's going on because I was so forward. You know, I was, I was yeah. 14 hanging with guys at 21, 25, and you know the apple with that. You know, you know, always getting in trouble, and you know, it it got to a situation where <clears throat> my family was just like, "Dan, you got to calm down." Like, we're always getting in trouble. And I said, "Listen, you're not seeing my frustrations. I've, I've, I've got a little boy. He needs feeding. I'm mm -hmm. getting pulled this side, pulled that side." And I said, "Look, all right, then if if that's how you feel, help me then, because you've got a lot to say. Well, then you you put something on the table and say, Dan, how about doing this?' Mm -hmm. And there was none of that, unfortunately." And um, I started getting into, um, I was banging into fashion. In fact, I still am now. Um, and I was into my hairstyles and stuff. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm sick of traveling like five, six hours 
um, on a Saturday to get a fresh trim to look good and stuff. So I started doing it myself. Um, I taught myself how, how to cut hair and I said, that, mm, I might be able to start making money out of this because I'm always trying to find an angle where I can earn a yeah. bit of money to, to, to feed my little one and stuff. So I started I started cutting friends and family um, and then I started building up a little reputation with that. And then I had like a, a queue of people down the stairs, that had all the neighbours moaning, grassing me up. I'm just trying to earn a pound note and try, yeah. and, put, and try and put nappies on, on my son and um, just trying to stay out of trouble. Obviously, I knew how to make money, fast money, which ain't gonna last long, ain't gonna keep in trouble with the law, mm -hmm. you're gonna keep knocking heads and keep getting knocked down. And after a while, <clears throat> you have to kind of know when to switch off. And then I walked past a shop one day um, that was empty. It was an empty shoe shop and there was a woman that she was cleaning out the shop. And I randomly just said, is, is this shop available? And she goes, yeah, actually. I said, right, okay. Um, I said, well, how do we have a conversation? She mm. goes, who's it for? I said, for me. She goes, yeah, you're about 15, 16. I said, yeah, I know. Let's move the age out a bit and let's just talk some business. And she goes, you know, like you're, you know, a bit full on sort of thing. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do, yeah. But as you're moving a bit slow, I'll help you move uh, some of the boxes to speed up our conversation. Anyway, it ended up signing like a five year deal. Um, I had no money, no nothing. It's just on my word. And I said, all right. I said, I'll, I'll make sure every month, um, I paid the money and then I had a massive shop, like a big rectangular shop, no shop sign, no, no, no nothing. I went home, um, just staring at the key and I said, right, what the fuck am I going to do now? So I took my bathroom mirror, garden chair, went back to the shop and I just got out. I, I got out, I, I literally just got out just like that because <clears throat> I had a reputation anyway. I knew everybody in, mm -hmm. in my area, in, the, in different areas and surrounding areas. I started bringing them in. And then three months, um, I made about 10 grand. I kitted out the shop, shop sign, barber chairs, and I started employing people. This was the funny bit now. So <clears throat> I, was, I was around 16, uh, 17, and um, I'm employing guys at like 35. And they're like, yeah, who's the boss of me? They're like, pardon? I'm like, look, if you want a job, let me know. If not, I'll keep it moving sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? And then um, <clears throat> I had about five staff in there, big grown men, by the way, you know, mortgage and kids and full on but I felt it was an issue because they was talking to me and I was so young and these guys yeah. like twice my age working for me and I'm paying them a yeah. wage every Saturday you with me like imagine how they're feeling kind of thing and then I started um, I started getting like champion these uh, footballers coming in randomly I've never really been into sports I like to know who's who sort of thing like that yeah. so I'm cutting these guys there one day and he goes oh do you do visits and I said yeah of course I'll go anywhere I'm a grafter, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shy to graft. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And he goes, all right then, um, uh, I'll take your number. And one day, <clears throat> I finished work at about, I was putting in shifts like from nine to half ten at night, just trying to get the, just trying to get the money in and build and build. Because I had a focus of, if I can get five or six shops and sell them, and I can take that lump of money in and move on to something bigger. Mm -hmm. And then I'd, um, I'd call one night to go to a hotel, and it, and it was like a room full of footballers. And I said, yeah, can you do this? I said, what? I said, sit down, ain't a problem. I sorted it all out, everyone's buzzing, happy, X, Y, Z. Anyway, I've got home now, I've, I've counted the money because everyone's just thrown it on the table and I've just grabbed it and put it in a bag and just, I'm off because I'm tired, yeah? So I was grafting from like half six in the morning all the way around the clock till half 10, then running out doing like hotel visits and all sorts. Mm. And I counted the money and I thought, why am I working all month when I can earn that in this year, hour and a half? It doesn't make sense. So I thought, okay, cool. A week later, I had another message. I had Daniel around. I said, yeah. He goes, oh, I'm in, um, I'm in Manchester this time. So no problem. He goes, no, no, no. I'll pay for your ticket and I'll get your taxi when you arrive and you can come and see us. And the rest was history. Yeah. So then I started building up some shots with the, with, the, with all the money I was making. I started. I had like one, two, three. I had five shops in the end, uh, in the space, like four or five years. Um, yeah. And then I started doing females and uh, males. I started mixing and then I opened up um, a takeaway and then I got a wine bar. But all this time I was doing the private jobs. Uh, with the, Well, a lot of the boys who, who I started with in the Champions League then went into the Prem. Yeah. So they brought me with them the whole way through. Yeah. So it's, it's like, even like now, I've seen the boys go from 17, 18 to they're like, right to the end of their career. Yeah. But they brought me with them. Yeah. Then I started traveling around the world, um, regular, involved in all the major tournaments, World Cup, 
Russia, Euros. Then I started doing all different clubs all around the world. So I've got France thinking about, I've got England, I've got this and that and that. It's just, it's, it's, it started going nuts. But then I started to realize that the shop started slowing down. So at this time I was flying, front page magazines, radio, TV, Sky Sports, Dan, 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 events, every, everything was going smooth. I was building up my name and um, it was good. And I started creating lifestyle videos. This was the, the game changer now. So bearing in mind, I've done all of this without no social media. Mm -hmm. There was no Instagram. Yeah. There was MySpace, I think. And then I, I think <laughs> Facebook. MSN. Yeah. Bebo. Yeah. And then I think, um, I think Facebook, um, I think Facebook started up. But even then I wasn't really big on, I wasn't really into it because I, I, I was so busy in, in my own world. Yeah, you're minding your business. Yeah, so I was doing um, high net worth and some of the wealthiest men in, in, in sports history at the time. And I'm, I'm really mean, some really big names, you know. Um, I'm traveling all around the world and I said, okay, cool. So how about if, if I sell, if I sell some of the business and then start getting its property, so then I got into property. <clears throat> I went from one house to five houses. Then I started renting out the rooms. And this is way before I even heard about HMOs now. Mm. Back then it was, if I had a house near a uni, I'm renting you a room. Yeah. And I've always been a grafter and I've, my ears always been to the ground. So I know who, who needs a room, who don't need a room, who, you know, friends and family, word of mouth. Yeah. And one of the key things, a lot of people say to me, oh, Dan, you changed. I'm not changed. I'm not going to be here in 10 years time and still be the same guy. My mm. principles will always be the same. My family's everything. Bearing in mind, I grew up, I didn't have a family wrapped around me like that. I was never sugar-coated, oh, Dan, you're right. I, um, how's things in life? I, I don't get them phone calls. Up mm. to this day, I still don't get it, but I've now created that myself anyway. So I've used all, all of that fuel to open my own doors mm. and really get fucking locked in in what I'm doing because a lot of people these days, it's, it's a bit different now because with social media, Someone might say, I've got a million followers. I've got 10 million views. And they think overnight they're a star. Yeah. There's, but there's no graft in it. There's no real build up to it. It's just, I'm on Instagram and I've got this and yeah. I've got that. Whereas I've used my whole network, everything, every person that's ever sat in my chair, every businessman, I've always took their emails, their phone numbers, and the, and the way I speak. I, I always carry myself well and I'm tuned in. Reason being, I always had a bigger picture. Yeah. So, I was always getting these random messages saying, Dan, like, why are you never here? Oh, you think you're too good now? It's not about being too good. It's, it's, it's about working smarter. Yeah. I'm not going to sit in one space every day for five years and 10 years. How do, well, it, let's, let's, it making sense? Let's pick it apart. I've just, you, you said at the beginning um, about being in a job, mm. like when you said to the teacher, how long you've been working. Yeah, yeah. This is funny. This is a little bit, um, this is old terminology. So yeah. when you hear people say, I've been in the job 10, 20 years. People <laughs> yeah, used yeah, to yeah. think yeah. that was a good thing. It's a statement that's no, not. Whereas now yeah. it's it's like, what? Yeah, You've been yeah, there yeah. 10, 20 years. Yeah. And it, you've, you've just hit the nail on the head. There's no growth there. No. And when people turn around and say, yeah, I know, but I went from cleaner to now senior director. Yeah, but you could have had so much more growth yeah. had you have been bold and said, you mm. know what? I'm going to start something else. Yeah. I'm going to mind my own business. I'm yeah. going to put the horse blinkers on. I'm going to focus in. And when you, you know, you're talking about people going, oh, you've changed, you know, yeah. you don't come around anymore and stuff like that. Yeah, because I'm going, that's going backwards. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to go backwards. I'm not I being rude. I'm in my zone. I ain't got time to hang, man. If I'm hanging, I'm hanging with my kids and my yeah. beautiful missus. Priorities. And um, I make sure that's a priority because that's something that I never grew with. Yeah. So in my head, it's always there that I'm not perfect. Everyone's made mistakes. In in, including myself, you know. Um, but what I've learned now is, is I needed those mistakes. Yeah. So going back to having the properties, having having the shops. Mm. One day I was at the wrong place, wrong time. Um, lost it all. Built an absolute fucking empire worth millions. Gone. Mm. All the front pages, f just flying everywhere. All my properties, the shops, lost it. Literally overnight. Um, Dark place, man. And how, so let's before we get into the film industry, because I also mm. want to find out how you got into that, because that's mm. an interesting talking point. Mm. When you were, uh, because there's there is a very close connection between criminals and entrepreneurs. Mm. It's just that there's a got there's a miss of there's a miscommunication and and a lack of guidance. Yeah. If you were to guide a criminal yeah. who can create an income yeah, yeah. and great income yeah. from nothing. 
But if they've got no guidance, they yeah. continue normally down that route. Yeah. What have what what have your experiences been, and what have you seen of those that are perhaps gone down the wrong path, but yeah. could have done so well, and you've ended up going down the entrepreneurial route? Yeah. How close was that from going down the wrong? Uh, did you have guidance? Because normally the no, people no, that no, make no. the turn, how did <laughs> no, that happen I had, for you? I had no rules as a kid. I just done what I wanted to do from young. I was a young man from 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 early, really, and my mum kind of knew that, and. I wouldn't say she let me do anything, but I just done what I needed to do because I'm a strong believer in if, if I can't have it, I'm taking it. Mm. And I'm not here. I'm, there's only one thing that is guaranteed in life and that's death. Mm. So I need to make sure that I'm getting as much as I can get in, support my family and, and, and then make sure that my kids have, have, have and their kids have and um, leave, leave a legacy for the entrepreneurship because like my eldest daughter, she's a model and an influencer. Uh, one of my other sons, he's, uh, he got into building, he's about to start up his construction company. Mm. These things just don't just happen. Yeah, These are talks and things that they see from me. Yeah. Now, I didn't have no one around me. There was no, ro there was no, there was no role models around me to show me, Dan, don't do this and don't do that. I always saw the wrong guys and I looked at them and I thought, you're that guy for a hot minute. Yeah. But if you get into a problem, then what? Yeah. And I'm trying to build something solid that, uh, you know, a really good foundation there that I can actually lay down and make sure that everyone can almost benefit from, from my family around me. But in, um, I don't just give anything away. I, I, I need to see people working as well because mm -hmm. I grow after everything I have. There's not yeah. one day that I don't work. Um, whether that's up and down or just moving smart, that's what I do now. Yeah. As I'm getting older, my energy is different. I still train every day. Um, it's you know it's a it's, it's a big part of me um, mindset. I've had a lot of downfalls. Um, well, t I'll tell you what I want to ask you mm. well, before we get onto the film stuff. Yeah. When it um, when it I mean this is a you know sort of byproduct of obviously you know your name is going to be everywhere because of the you know the film stuff and yeah. the business stuff and going on socials like mm -hmm. it can't not be. Mm. And then obviously the people that you're hanging around with on socials who are also done yeah. well, like you know, like compound effect happens for socials 100%. as well. How have you found? Because a lot, I, I'm talking a lot about relationships. Yeah, you know, because a lot of people are struggling to even. I saw it was crazy the other day. I saw an app mm. that you can download and you can put your partner's details in it to see whether they're really compatible for you. <laughs> it's nuts. It's totally nuts. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To me, I don't know actually how relationships are going to survive. And when people become so big on social media yeah. and they're going to red carpet events, they're going to Marbella, they're getting like in invited to all this really cool and high energy stuff where yeah. you can have self growth quick. Yeah. But when it comes to trust in a world where everyone's half naked, yeah. you know, like you said, you've got two good looking lads here. Yeah, you've got yeah, an yeah. average guy behind the <laughs> camera there. <laughs> yeah. Middle finger, he just pointed at yeah, me. Yeah. Um, yeah. How have you found in terms of like relationships, staying and holding trust throughout this journey? <laughs> Honestly, um, I made loads of mistakes. Loads, you know, I'd, I've always been known from a young kid. Um, and then I shot to semi-fame as they call it through the footballing world. And then I started getting introduced to the higher network where it enables me to actually branch away from doing the styling stuff into more of a concierge. So if you ran me and said, Dan, that, that, I need a private jet now. No problems. I'm on the phone. I'll make it happen. Mm. Dan, uh, my wife wants some boot on. Not a problem. Yeah. I'm meeting different people and the conversation is important. And obviously you're in situations, obviously you're surrounded by the best of everything. Um, but back then I made loads of mistakes. I'm a very, very settled man now. I've got, I've got a lovely missus, um, a beautiful daughter called Nevaeh. She's free, acting like she's 16 at the minute. But um, relationships, for me, you're actually the first guy to ask for this, you know, blatant on, on, on camera, but I'm gonna give you an honest answer. I have never found, I wouldn't say complacent, I've never really been, even though I've had everything, I've never really been happy. Mm. So, Having a semi-absent mum, because I was I was a lot when I was younger. I was never in, I was always out, active, getting these problems. And I raised myself. So when you've got an absence of a mum and a dad, 
the absence mum, the things I was missing and craved from my mum, which I didn't get, I was I, I found myself searching for it mm. through women, but I was searching for the wrong stuff. And what makes me happy now is peace and a loyal, I wouldn't say so much loyal, but a woman that carries herself very well, mm. like a queen, because I believe I'm a king. And I've always gone for the wrong girls before. Not on purpose. I might start a relationship and, you know, things work out and some stuff don't work out. But, you know, I was just different back then. And it, it, it's a bit, I shouldn't say this, but it's semi like a business. It's mm. growth. It's about evolving. It's about yeah. growing as a person. And at that particular time, you know, when you live in the fast life, you're... <clears throat> at events and you're a bit younger, obviously your head's gonna go left and right. But one of the main things that really, really, really kicked me in the nuts was when I lost everything that time. I was in a deep, dark place, man, really deep. And then I had an incident where um, I woke up in hospital, I couldn't walk. Uh, I was told I'd never walk again. I could never kick football. I could never play with my kids. Um, I was told I wanna to amputate my leg. So I'd have one and a half leg. I said, no way. I shut myself out. I was in hospital for like two months. Um, lost loads of weight. I come out of there and I had pins all down my leg. I've got four bolts in my knee now. And now I'm doing Thai boxing uh, three or four times a week. I do 5K runs. Um, I keep myself motivated. Um, the reason why I've, I've just brought that in, because it goes hand in hand with relationship. It's about commitment. Mm. So I was committed that I'll, I will run again. And I was committed that I can be a better person than I was yesterday. Yeah. And I was committed that I'm going to do well and actually paved the way now and showed my kids that obviously not all relationships work out, but when you've got something special, you have to hold on to it. Um, I've met a lovely a lovely lady now, her name's Michelle. Um, and I'm in a good place, man. I yeah. mean, all my family see me and they say, damn, we've never seen like this. And I'm just in a good place because she kind of showed me, because she's Irish as well, massive family. I thought it was fucking weird. Like, I would say to her, <laughs> why do you talk to your sister? like 15 times a day on FaceTime. Yeah. Then they've got all these little group chats and all that and they're just chatting, chatting, but I never had that. Yeah. So for me, that was foreign. That was weird. Like, what are you doing? It's relationship. Yeah. So then I'm seeing things there because I've never really been around a tight unit family. Like if someone falls, everyone helps in. If I fall, I've only got me. Yeah. I can't run down the road and say help, help to somebody else. I've got to make sure that I'm cool. But um, yeah, I'm in a good place now, man. And I've learned a lot, but I've learned how to become a better person and a, and a better man and a better father because I've grown. Mm. And it's important to, to make sure that, that you're growing daily. Yeah. You, you can get in a bad place. Like, yes, I do go to red carpet events. I've been my missus. Yes, I do go out. I've been my missus. Even yeah. if, I'm, if I'm not my missus, I'm still staunch. I know how to just be cool yeah. and not even get tempted because it's, it's, again, it goes back to commitment. It's the same yeah. thing in anything, whether it's business, relationships, even having a, I think we mentioned earlier on this morning, if you say, Dan, I'll meet you at four o'clock, I'm there at four o'clock. Yeah. Because I'm only good at as my word. It's yeah. the same thing in anything you do. So I'm just, even now, I'm learning every day and I'm around people that are actually family orientated people mm. because I'm learning from it as well. So I found it a bit hard to grasp at the beginning because I've already been, I've always just been, you know, just sort of like just me. Mm. You know, it's, it's all about me. I'm gonna do this, I don't need no one. And because I had this little chip on my shoulder. Yeah. But over the years, that's kind of gone. Um, well, like you say, you're always searching for something. And you know yeah. what? I think a lot more people, without realizing it, have quite low self-esteem. Yeah. I think where you search for things which, which have been vacant, mm. makes you have a low self-esteem. Mm which then results in seeking validation from yes. other people. Yes. Then it's all self-centered. What can I do? What can I do? And like you say, you, you sound like you're in a place of contentment at the moment, yeah. you know, where I'm good. Like I'm focused. I and it just, it's more of, I know who I am. Yeah. I know where I'm going. And I've got, I don't, a lot of people are followers. Okay. So they don't actually, if you ask a straightforward question, what do you want to do? Where's mm. it been five years? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, I can't answer. But why not? Yeah. If you can tell me you're going to be in, in a job for five years, then you can tell me where you're going to be in the next five years. Like, what's what's going on? Yeah. A lot of people just lost souls, man. And I thought at the time I was younger, when I was earning the fast money, you know, the cars, the clothes, the watches, the this and that. 
And I was, there, there was still that bit missing. I'm thinking, well, hold on a minute. I've, I've got, I've got, what's, what's missing? And the missing is being the peace within yourself. Mm. So it's like, sometimes you can meet someone and it, it opens up a different, I've never really been, like for me, this is probably one of the first interviews I've ever done where I'm being a bit open about my personal life. Mm. Cause I don't really get into that. Cause if you notice on my social is very, I use my platforms to either promote what I'm doing yeah, or if it's a product or a business that I'm doing or a part of, that's all you'll see. Yeah. You might see an odd picture of, of me and my daughter or my missus at an event, but this is like a very, I'll say it's the first interview where I've kind of opened up a little bit. Yeah. But this is all coming from self-growth as well. Before yeah. I was quite enclosed and I thought it was cool not, not to speak. Like, us to if, if I tell you that I'm feeling like this, you're, then you're going to, your opinion of me. Yeah. But now I don't give a fuck what people think of me. Yeah. I really don't. A lot of people say to me, Dan, oh, like, I've seen this comment. I don't care. Yeah. These guys behind the keyboard, who are they? I'm, I don't care what they say, yeah. what they think of me, what they're doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm about. And I'm a go-getter. So I, I'm here to inspire generations that have no self-belief, don't believe in themselves, had a hard life, think the world owes them. The world don't owe you shit. Yeah. A lot of people seek validation, i.e. if I go to an event, I might people saying, oh yeah, Dan, why have you not brought me? Mm. And I, I'm looking and I'm thinking, I've not heard from you for three years, number one. Yeah. Number two, do you know, I've had to grow off my back out to get yeah. to where I am today. So and if you, you want, see me at the event, know. it ain't just a random pick and say, Dan, come, I'm there for a reason. Yeah. Because I'm grafting. So. Yeah. If you're going to work with me and build as a team, then of course, let's, let's move. But all of this sort of thinking that I owe you something. And that comes from growing up from a bad background. Yeah. If one person makes it, you've got to take the whole entire class with you. Yeah. But why? Why? But that's a, that? lack, that's a lack of understanding like self-growth, like self-improvement. Mm. Like people, people assume that they're, they're entitled and they're owed something, yet... You know what you're talking about, and we, which is what I like and I can resonate with. Is like there is. I find that there's no excuse. Like if you mm. want something, do you need information? Right, the information's there. Do you need to meet someone? Right, go out and meet someone. There's a networking event for yep. it. Oh, but I don't want to go there. So you've got to get a train. I've got to pay for the train. I, I want to watch Game of Thrones tonight. Exactly. You don't. You don't want it enough. That's what mm. I mean. There's so many people would love for it to be offered on a plate, but no one's willing to mm. put in the yards. I think that's because of the social media now. Like people look on social media and they want it instantly because they think they can do one post and they've made it or they've met one guy and they post with them and they think they've made it. It's not that. Yeah. You have to do the legwork. It's like, it's, it's, like, it's like building a house. You can't just walk into a six bedroom mansion with a pool, six acres of land, horses and stables in the back. <laughs> you need, let, let's lay the foundations and then build brick by brick. Mm. But everyone's, everyone wants to skip that now. Yeah. Because they feel that with social media, they can jump the queue. Yeah. You can't, you sort of put the work in. It's yeah. like, when I did join social media, I was one of the first guys to get verified. Yeah. No management, no agent. Yeah. Nothing. Just off my own back. Graft in, head down, and then one day pops up verified. I'm like, cool. And everyone's like, oh my God, you're verified. I'm like, Right, I'm still doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Nothing's changing. It just means, I, I right. So there was a stage I was doing really well um, in my industry, and I was leading it for a long time, near a decade. Then other people started to replicate it, which is fine for me. I'm I'm honoured. If someone phones me, says, "Oh Dan, oh, I was so and so doing that, just like you," I'm like, "Great, I've inspired them to do that. That's fantastic." But <clears throat> it's um. The validation thing is very, very, I think for people's mi mindsets and health reasons, there needs to be a, a kind of cap on things because people just think if you're, if you're verified or if you've got some amount of followers that like you've made it, hmm. but where's the, where's the back end story there? Where, yeah. where have you come from? But that's the problem I've seen with people just growth. Yeah, because there's no story in between. Like you can't say, "Oh, eight o'clock in the evening, I was watching X Factor," and then by yeah. Monday morning, scrambled yeah. eggs. Yeah. I got like four million, and then yeah. they're like, "Oh, actually, I must be entitled now. Mm -hmm. I can start talking to people." Mm -hmm. It's it's a crazy world. I mean, how did you how, how did you then veer off in and sort of take this path into sort of like film and stuff like right, that? So how what did happened that come was about? during my journey, I had a lot of people knocking on the door, but I was so busy. I looked, at, you know. 
I was looking after some of the wealthiest men in the world and their demands are strong. So I'm on, on and off planes and trains and this and that. And I, I, I was on a plane one day and I was sitting there and I'm thinking, hold on a minute, how long, how long is this plane journey now? Eight hours. Just eight hours there and I'll get off there. They're going to send me a driver. I'll get to the hotel, it's another hour. Sit in the hotel for a couple of hours. Then I'm going to see them. And, mm. All of a sudden I've lost two days, mm. sometimes a week. And then I had all these, you know, not, not all, I had a good few key people around me because my network's very strong. That's one thing that I have built up over the last 15, 20 years is a strong network. Mm. But I wasn't, it goes back to relationships. I wasn't fully committed how I am now. And I have to say, that's probably why whatever happened to me back then happened. Because I, I, it got taken from me it was, and it wasn't my problem, but it got, I still believe to this day it, it got took because I wasn't ready for it then. Mm. But the growth and where I'm at now, I'm ready. So I had a phone call one day, um, one of my pals, uh, he's, he was close mates with a guy called Paul Knight and I was doing a shoot in the film and he said, damn, we've got this lovely bit for you. Uh, do you want to come down? I said, all right, cool, I'll come down. But this is something I've always wanted to do anyway. Yeah. Um, I've done loads of TV stuff before, but it's always been like interviews or Sky TV or ITV, BBC, the, the list goes on. Um, and I went down there, I went to do uh, one part and I ended up playing a massive role in it and they loved it to bits. Um, and then um, one of my close mates, uh, Terry Stone, and our business partner, um, had a conversation with him as well. Uh, we met up, had a really good conversation <clears throat> um, and the rest is history from that. Yeah. And I'm I'm really, really going to put my hands into this one here. Because yeah. I believe I'm, I will be uh, one of the... Um, a, a world will now name in the in the acting industry because anything yeah. anything I do I go in it deep. Yeah, I don't go half hearted. Um, we're working on uh, something now called um, Film Coin. So it's a it's a cryptocurrency. It's the first cryptocurrency to ever fund films. Wow, this is absolutely fucking major. This is probably one of the biggest things I'm part of that I've ever. I don't blow smoke about anything, but this is something that it, it is life changing. It's mm -hmm. the first ever film to be produced through cryptocurrency yeah it's crazy and that's gonna be that's called tales from a trap um i've got a big part in that we start shooting that soon um i'm shooting next week for a film called tate uh two days of blood uh, rise of foot soldier yeah. um a part of the foot soldier stories and stuff so yeah i'm working alongside uh some big names and there's and there's a few more but i can't say too much yeah um but there's at least four or five films there and i'm, I'm excited for my new journey and i'm I believe that it's come out at the right time because sometimes I've done things in my career and I thought, right, I'm ready. Smacked it. I've done this. Mm -hmm. I've done that. It's not your time yet done. Yeah. And you think, why the fuck is it not happening now? Yeah. And you think you're ready. Yeah. And he's, you're Biting not. at the bit. You have to. Patience. Part of being an of, of, of entrepreneur is, I mean, now people throw that word around yeah. too freely. Entrepreneurs have a lot of ups and downs. I've had loads of ups and downs loads had it lost it had it lost it built learn built learn i've had quite a lot of failures i've had losses in the family i've had loads of things go wrong yeah and i do mean loads of things go wrong i've lost friends but i keep going yeah some people just hold their head and they bury their hand in the sand and start singing songs the violence come out i'm not interested <laughs> in that Mate, use that to resonate. propel yourself to the next to that next sector so this yeah. part of my journey i'm very excited for and I'm ready to just turn it upside down and make a household Mate, name. Mate, you're going to smash it. Business. Thank you, man. The thing is, your network, honestly, I can't, for anyone watching, like, I can't reallitterate enough how powerful your network is. And Thank the, you, man. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter, also, the background that you come from. If you swap the negative circle to a positive circle, the mm. doors that open it, I mean, you're seeing it as well. You, I don't, you don't even need to tell you this. You know that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you say that. Like Paul and I, obviously, we're in business together, but we talk about our own businesses and stuff like that. Mate, I had a throwback 8.30 Monday morning. I was on the phone to Paul at the time yeah. when we were talking. Two deals fell through. Boom. Cost me a lot. Yeah. But you just said it. I did wallow in my own pity for an hour. Yeah. I did leave the gym. It's natural because yeah. it's, it's an emotion. I need to reset. Yeah. But then- Simple. Like you say, no one's going to pick me up. I can moan about it. I can yeah. ring a set. I can be like, this has happened. Yeah. But 
you pull yourself back up and that's yeah. the that's the difference that's why if we walk down the road now past yeah. 100 people yeah. there's only going to be two three of us yeah max because Maximum. there's 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 not many people that are able to pull themselves up do you know what there was a time that i did say this on a podcast there was a time where i sat there and i thought fuck i want to get a full life job <laughs> <laughs> well i didn't think but you know what it, it is not though? worth it i think as an entrepreneur sometimes we gamble a lot more because our mindset's different we think different we see things different and we're visionaries I've, I vision everything that I have now. Mm. When I was in a dark place and I had nothing, not a fucking pot to piss in, I had a new relationship, I had a penny jar. I'm not even joking, bro. I had a penny jar full of pound coins. Well, not, sorry, full of pennies. I've gone to the pound land shop, yeah? Mm. No joke, I'm all, straight up and down. I've emptied out coins to buy something for two pounds. Yeah. And I said, fuck this, I, I, I can't do this. I had enough. And I just took every every last bit of energy and just thought, do you know what? I'm not coming this far to only come this far. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I've done more things in a lifetime than some people will ever do, ever, ever do, even even in a week. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So Do you know, I was asked recently, how long are you going to keep going for like until you want to achieve? What is it? You know, have you got a timeline? No, no, no. I'm just going to keep, there's no, yeah, no, yeah, I yeah. can't give you a timeline. I'm just going to keep going yeah. because one thing's guaranteed. If I stop, yeah, it's done. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might as well go get another yeah. job. Do you know one thing? I'm not massively materialistic, but I do like certain things. Yeah, of course. I do like watches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you know one of my next material yeah. things that I would like? I do want a Rolex. Rolex, yeah, That yeah. is my next. I don't often spend. When I when I earn, yeah. it goes through my son's savings, investments, yeah, yeah. all these different arms that it filters off to automatically. Yeah. And then it gets to fun money, and that's when I can justify it. But one of my next goals to myself... Because I, th- I really believe in celebrating successes, media, small, medium, big. I celebrate big. every win. Mine's a Rolex. That's what it's going to be. I think you'll have two of those. Mate, one I for the day, one day and one for special occasions. Mate. Honestly. Honestly. Dude, I've absolutely loved this podcast, mate. Um, I'm here, man. Mate, I can't thank you enough. If people do want to reach out, find out more about your films, just connect with you, touch yeah, yeah. base, where can they go, mate? Right. Hit me up on Instagram is I am Daniel Johnson. On my Twitter is I am Daniel J. I've just started TikTok, by the way. I'm new to it. Come my daughter's on to me. She's like, Dad, you need to get a TikTok. I said, I'm not sure, but I said I've started it. So that's I am Daniel Johnson. Um, underscore Facebook is I am Daniel Johnson. Um, the new film to look out for, which is going to be out, I think, just after summer, Take Two Days of Blood, Rise of the Foot Soldier. Uh, you see me in that. Also, there's a new film, the first ever film of cryptocurrency, film coin. It's called Tell Someone Trap. Make sure you tune in and just just follow my journey, man. There's a lot of exciting things to happen and uh, thanks for having me. And just for you as well, man, um, just uh, keep going. I like what you're doing and I respect the graph, man. Mate. Nice one, brother. It's a lot, lot, mate. Pleasure's all mine. You know, cool, thanks mate. so much for coming on. No worries. Everyone who's watched, um, can't thank you enough. It was also honestly really enjoyed this one and we will see you all very soon.